Yo, what's up everybody? How you doing? This is Coach Renz. I'm here in the beautiful St. Thomas, uh, Virgin Islands, U.S. Virgin Islands, enjoying myself uh, on vacation for a couple of few days, four days, and I want to take some time out, you know, to discuss and shoot a video down here uh, concerning what we talk about oftentimes. You know, we talk about the alchemy of life, we talk about the 360 degrees of life, we talk about elevating our consciousness. And I thought, what better place to talk about something as far as what happens life after death? Many people would call this paradise. They would call it paradise. And I want to thank everybody who subscribes to the channel. But I would, um, many people call this paradise. This is heaven, right? And because people were saying, like, this is paradise, you're living in paradise, you'd be living in paradise to move here, because I am looking at moving here in the next two years. Or one and a half years looking at moving down here and people will say this is paradise this is paradise because before I move to Africa we're going to come down here keep business being established and then move to Africa and this will be paradise to live here when we go to Africa we're, going, we're looking at places like Cape Verde which would be again paradise and people talk about paradise all the time and life after death but what do we really know about that what, what, what do we really call it and I'm holding the camera so excuse me for when it moves uh, but what is life after death. I mean, religions have been based on the ideas of what people's perceptions are of life after death. Oftentimes people will say, I don't know. Well, people should say, I don't know. Most people won't. They'll give a definitive answer based on their religion. The thing about that is that your religion is based on your parentage. Your religion is based on what nationality you are, where you were born, what decade you were born in, what century you were born in. If you were someone who was melanated as myself, whose family ancestry comes from West Africa, you and I was born more than 400 years ago, five, six hundred years ago, my ideas of heaven would not be the Christian version of heaven because I would have been born at a time frame where that wasn't it. If you was born in China, uh, today or even 500 years ago 300 years ago your ideas of what heaven is it would it be a Taoist idea or would it be a Buddhist idea would it be an atheistic idea it would it be an ancient Chinese religion what would it be we don't know we can't say but let's talk about what we do know what the ancestors have written what people have written over time now we know in the new age world it is oh you come you live you die you go to heaven or you go to hell but let's think about that heaven and hell based on the abrahamic idea of it all so we have this loving god and this loving god supposedly says that i'm going i'm going to give you free will to choose whether or not to follow me love me follow my rules and I'm going to give you this free will because I love you. But if you don't choose me, then I'm going to send you into an eternity of hell. That doesn't sound right, does it? No, of course not. Of course it doesn't. How, what, how could a loving God, if you are, as a parent, as a parent, how many parents give their children second chances, third chances, fourth chances? How many parents would send their children, regardless of what they have done, to a, an eternity of hell? At least the Jewish people have an idea that you just go into oblivion. You go into a state where you don't exist anymore without any consciousness. There is no hell of burning and fire. And, and really, this idea of hell comes from the misunderstanding and mistranslations of St. Augustine. St. Augustine, who barely, barely could read Greek, translated the ideas of the Greek Steptuagint and the um, Vulgate, he took those writings and his poor ability to read Greek and he convinced the church and the church just followed thereafter of this idea that Hades is hell, is this fire brimstone burning all the time place of life, which was wholly incorrect and the whole church doctrines have been built on this. Your entire Christianity and Islam has been built on this hell of torment from your loving God. At least the Jewish version is that you just didn't exist. Now, if the Jewish version was that you just stopped existing because Golgotha, hell, um, is a valley outside of the city where all the trash is thrown and the wretched of society exists and was used as an example 
of just a bad place to be. But hell for the Jewish culture, the Abrahamic culture, the one that you claim you birthed from, was a place of non-existence, not existing, period. But we know that couldn't also work either. Because we know the first law of thermodynamics is that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It just transmute from one form to another form. So therefore, we cannot just be into a state of oblivion either. That just won't do. So what happens? Well, according to the comedic and the... Well, according to let's go with the comedic and then we'll go with the Anunnaki. As far as the comedic understanding, and you'll find that this same teaching, you will find this in the Hopi Indians, the Aztecs, the Mayans, you'll find it in ancient um, Pacific Islanders, you'll find this teaching all around the world prior to being um, forced to follow a, Ju a Judo-Christian idea, that it was more of a reincarnation, it was more of a life after, where you were supposed to learn things here and then you go to a, an, an afterlife where you are with your ancestors. You, you never was punished into this hell. You, you went and lived a life according to uh, your works and how you worked and how you live, your, your karma, so to speak, uh, your, or your dharma. You went and lived that life in the afterlife, in the afterworld with the, uh, with the gods or the god, depending upon which, where you're pulling from. But the Egyptian Book of the Dead shows us that we uh, we would live this life and if we understand the right spells and right things to say and the right things to do when it comes time for judgments and going through the, the journey of getting to uh, the boatman or Osiris and being able to journey across the river to dwell in heaven, so to speak, the underworld, then you would, that's how you would live your life. And then you would live a life that was very similar to the one that you just lived. It was a kind of an afterlife version of reincarnation where you go and live pretty much the exact same life. And of course that was the stories based on the uh, understanding that they had from what they were taught. Now what were they taught? Because the Sumerian Anunnaki, the, the, the Kwasi Kodal, the, the, the sky people, um, all these people are similar to the Metanetchers, similar to the gods of Egypt, the Tanut and, you know, us. All of them are similar, the Jed. All are very similar, Osiris. And Osiris really is a journey of your soul. And when we truly look at what the Anunnaki demonstrated, not so much taught, because we know that the Anunnaki didn't want to teach man everything. We have the battle between Iggy and Enlil as far as man needing to know. And this same story is told with the Greeks and the Romans and every other culture where there's one who wants man to know things and teach man things where there's another who does not. So this same story has been repeated throughout history, throughout time. But the similarities, the same thing that we find, what we find consistent is that in the Anunnaki story, the... Anunnaki demonstrated, demonstrated that you are reincarnated, that you are a spiritual being, an energetic spiritual being that has come and formed together in the masculine and feminine energy, formed and birthed a soul, and that soul journeyed through the breath, through the energy, the, the flow, the ka, into the formation, the, ma the manifestation of this body. That when it came to earth, in order for the soul to exist here on earth, the spirit has to do the work to manifest the physical body. But in that journey, we don't, and, and when we get here, the idea is the soul is to experience what it's like to be me in this experience. And then by experiencing that, it journeys back. It, it is both, it's looking to journey back. But before it journeys back, as the Buddhists teach, uh, it has a lot to learn. It has a lot to go over. A lot to a lot to um, to do. So in that doing, it lives many lives. And many people have done past regression lives. Many people who are judo Christian would say that someone, a child, is an old soul, or they've been here before. Now I want you to think about that. You'll say that they've been here before, but they've been here before because they didn't finish the lessons that they were looking to learn. You even find reincarnation in your Judo-Christian books. When you look at the book of Revelation, it says that uh, in the last days, the final days, and when the Antichrist is like waging war on the earth, that 
uh, Moses and Elijah will preach in front of the um, the in front of in front of one of the um, one of the churches that he they will preach for a number of days or months or something of that nature that they will preach there. I think like three years, three and a half years they will preach. I mean, this is supposed to be Eli Elijah and Moses, right? Now, if this is Elijah and Moses, let's think about it. If they were real people, if Elijah and Moses lived, and if you are a Judeo-Christian Judeo Islamic religion, then you believe that they existed as human beings. Those beings, bodies, have decayed, have gone to grass. Therefore, in order for them to come back and be in the physical manifestation again, that would mean they reincarnated. But unlike most of us who pass this life and come back for a next life, they would reincarnate it with their full Merkaba, being able to know exactly who they are and what life they led. If you look at the allegory of the story, it is teaching that if you die in a state of knowing, of consciousness, and have your full Merkaba about you, then you will remember that past life. You will know exactly who you are. You will come to an understanding, a higher conscious level. And that's our journey. The reason why we, our spirit, our energy continues to come back is because we have not fully came to the alchemical mindset of knowing why we are here, what we are experiencing, what lessons we've come to learn. And is it just here? No, not just here. You could have been on another whole planet. It's not just here. If you believe and think that this is the only planet of life in the whole of the universe, we should have a whole nother conversation. But recognize this, and I'll tell you guys something that I don't tell many people, uh, haven't told many people, I should say, is that right now, this state of my being, I consciously remember three lives. I consciously remember three lives. I remember one life in Ethiopia, right? And this is and this Ethiopian lifestyle is before is before Kush conquered Egypt. But I remember that life. I remember a second life in China. This life was about seven eight hundred years ago. I remember that life. And I remember um, the most recent life I remember was in the 1920s in Harlem. I remember that life. Now I recognize that the times of my life being relived, this consciousness coming back, have shortened dramatically. And in each one of those lives, I see the difference in the personality that I embody. In Ethiopia, it was a warrior, general, militaristic personality. Devoid of most of all human contact. Had a family, but didn't really deal with it. In China, it's a natural medicine man. Known very well in the community, took very good care of the village. Had a family, but somewhat recluse and an asshole. In the 1920s, a black woman who recognized that the system was broken and that something had to change in Harlem, that things weren't right. She wore pants and was defiant of following the basic system of the traditions of everything. I see the growth in each life and I understand the growth in each life to a deeper level. There's a lot more to it, but that's not for you. As for me. But the point is, each time frame has become shorter and shorter. And I know that I'm quickly approaching that conscious level where I will not return here. That there will be no more lessons for me to learn here. Whether I can fulfill that understanding in this life, it may not be. But the next, it may be. Maybe I come back, since I've come back as an Ethiopian, I've come back as an Asian man, I've come back as a black woman, and now I'm here as a black man. There is another lesson 
there may be another lesson, another understanding, a deeper level of consciousness that I may not uh, get to in this life, but I will be charged to come back and get to it in the next life. But I know that the times are shorter. The times are shorter. The woman in the 1920s, she died in the 1940s. I was born in 1971. The time has gotten shorter. But what happens is the understanding that we are to learn. We are here to experience and learn about being in this universe, understanding the complexities as well as the simplistic nature of this universe, how we live, how we grow, how we develop, being able to develop our consciousness to the state of being full with a full Merkaba. Now this goes very deep into our chakra systems if we use that. If you've listened to any of my chakra videos, you would know that I teach you, I've taught you that the first three chakras, your foundation chakra, your sexual chakra, your power chakra, those exist to protect you and keep you safe here in this physical manifestation. The problem that many have is they do, do not they do not make the 90 degree turn, the half step from your power chakra to your heart chakra because you can't truly get into the spiritual realm of this understanding if you can't get your heart right if you can't let go of pride if you can't let go of a past pain if you can't let go of guilt you can't let go of shame if you stop living in fear if you, if you constantly live in fear your heart chakra will never truly open and if it doesn't open you never really open the chakras of your throat chakra communication, imagination, creativity. You never open your third eye. That third eye is the part that allows you to, to visualize, to connect. When you dream, you dream through the DMT releasing through your third eye. It allows you to connect with the higher realm. And then it is called, it, in between your third eye, before we get to your crown, there is another chakra that many don't talk about. This chakra is like the dioth on the tree of life in the, in, in, in the Kabbalah. That die, that die off, that dark side that they talked about in Star Wars that they didn't want to go through the dark side, that the dark side leads to all kind of destruction. No, that going through the die off actually leads to where you gain an understanding so that the wisdom that you have picked up from your third eye before you get to your crown, going into the die off, and which if you watch the last Star Wars, in order for Luke to truly become a Jedi Master, he went through the Dayat. He did not live in fear as previous Jedi had been. He realized that in, you have to know the light side and the dark side. So even in the Kabbalah, what they teach you is to stay away from the dark side. That's why in many Kabbalah trees, you will not see the Dayat. You'll see um, Benai and, and then you'll go straight across and, and you will not go to the Dayan. But it is only by understanding the dark side and how to manage the dark side and how it works with you, not against you, and how it's something that you need. We run away from, the, from what we would consider the negative dark side of ourselves. But in truth, we have to come to an understanding of it. Our crown, which leads us to be able to release all earthly attachments can never be fully opened or developed until we go through the dark side, go through the dioth, until we go through that ZL chakra. That ZL chakra, which is between your third eye and crown, that is where the true power of elevating your consciousness to the next level is. And when you elevate your consciousness, then you start to understand the alchemical mindset you, must, you start to understand how we reincarnate until we have no need to come back here to learn any more lessons here, to gain deeper understanding here. And we live a life that is beautiful. We become a master and adept. So what happens life after death? If you haven't learned the lessons, you will come back. Whether it's 100 years from now, Five years, a hundred years after you die, five years after you die, a thousand, ten thousand. Until you come here, you gain that understanding. 
and develop your full Merkaba so that you can remember your past lives. You, you know who you have been so that you can pull from the lessons of those past lives until we reach that. Then we will continue to come back until we learn that lesson to be able to elevate our consciousness to the next dimensional plane. And at that next dimensional plane, we start over again. That crown chakra is the doorway to getting into the base chakra of the higher planes of existence. This is why Jacob had a ladder and there was spirits, energies ascending and descending. This is why Muhammad had levels of heaven, levels of hell. This is why the Catholic had levels of heaven, levels of hell. This is why all consciousness had that. And the Anunnaki taught us this in their demonstration of reincarnating over and over again until there was no need to reincarnate again. And I know many of you are going to talk about melanin and, uh, and only melanated people are from the Anunnaki. And, and I saw one comment about that, but melanin is in everyone. Asian people get their color from being, having melanin. And although we say white people are white, they're not white. They have melanin. They just don't have as much as I have. But melanin doesn't make your consciousness. And I want you to, I'm going to go, I'm going to leave you with this thought for that idea for people who, who follow that. Because I, I heard it more than just this one person. But you think about it. If only melanated people came from the Anunnaki, then how did white people catch up consciously? How did white people catch up? Because if they don't have any Anunnaki blood, how did they catch up? to where we are because we we see that the Sumerians say that the Anunnaki uh, sped up man's genome now the Anunnaki didn't speed up every version of man's genome then how did they catch up the only other explanation that you will be able to utilize for them catching up would be that when homo sapien walked came out of Africa through the one of the last migrations um, 65,000 no the migration that was about um, 125 or 600 by 125,000 years ago and came into the European Peninsula and that uh, the Neanderthal was there that as they that one of the there's two theories one theory is that they killed all the Neanderthals but the other theory and the more likely theory is that they made it with them had children and ran pretty much took over their bloodline now if that's the case just as the Spanish people still have Moorish blood the Italian people have Moorish blood the the uh, uh, Portuguese people have Moorish blood, then that will still make them have Anunnaki blood. Maybe not as much, but they will still have it. That would then say they caught up that way. Still, they would have the Anunnaki blood and the consciousness will still be there. We have to, if you want to elevate your mind, first thing you got to realize is that this is a manifestation of your mental creation. This is not who you are. Because in the next life, you may not be a melan heavily mel melanated person. Because maybe there's a lesson you need to learn as a less melanated person. So, we need to understand that. And if you are, I will say this, if you're melanated in a deep, dark melanation, you're learning lessons, you're growing, you're getting better. You're in that process. But I want you to think about it. There are very less melanated white people whose consciousness of understanding the Merkaba and energy and, and the utilization of energy and, and how we move and open our chakras, there are many of them who understand it and utilize it. While there are many heavily melanated people, heavily melanated people, still following those Abrahamic religions and have no idea how to elevate their consciousness no idea and for all we know those melanated people may come back as a less melanated person and those less melanated may come back as a melanated person you may have been a melanated person in a previous life i mean a less melanated person in a previous life think about that either way y'all have a great day i'm going to get ready to go to dinner enjoy some more of saint thomas y'all have a great day Remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your consciousness is non-negotiable. Good journeys, good vibrations.